Welcome back to our 12th session of RS Therapy. I'm Yoko. Today, we'll learn about the concept and implications of self-care. We'll also explore how art as therapy can be a tool for self-care. Finally, I'll take you through therapeutic art activities for self-care. Self-care is not a need. It is a priority of your professional practice. Self-care helps to keep a balance of human functioning in a holistic way. This includes cognitive, mental, physiological or physical, and emotional aspects of your life. Self-care ensures sustainability and longevity of professional practice and career. Firstly, accumulated negative stress. You have either neglected the fact that you are experiencing too much stress or adopted a negative coping strategy. In the last session, we have explored in details the adverse effects of negative stress. Secondly, toxic optimism. Toxic optimism is thinking that by just thinking positively, for example, I eat right, so I wouldn't feel sad or sick. It is a non-genuine way of optimism. The person is neither happy nor healthy. For example, always saying, just be positive. You get through it. I'm okay, I'm okay. Does not mean that you are feeling well. Sometimes this thinking is pressurized by a positive culture or bearing over responsibility of oneself. It can also lead to improper or unprocessed grief. Thirdly, burnout and compassion fatigue. For burnout, you will be physically, emotionally or mentally worn out. For compassion fatigue, you will be exposed to and absorb the trauma and emotional stress of others in your work. We must acknowledge that we are ourselves a container that has limits in its physical body and mental capacity. We contain emotions and feelings from ourselves and those felt or transferred from others. We must also set proper boundaries in our personal, social and professional life. Lastly, we also need to perform regular maintenance on our well-being. Symbolically, how do we maintain the shape, form, and the functionality of this container that is ourselves? Self-care can be performed as a life enrichment routine. You can continue to adopt what has been working for you. Remember that self-care is not another to-do on your list. Make it an event and set a time to make art as a me time. Self-care should be a daily measure that is effortless, simple and pleasurable. So begin with some very simple and pleasurable art activities like everyday journaling. It might also be helpful to regularly change the modalities. For example, if you have been doodling with pencil to de-stress for a long time, you may try another medium or method such as doodling with paints or making crafts to de-stress, you can expose yourself to a wider range and more balanced ways to self-care as your needs evolve over time. There are many types of weaving and uh, weaving methods. Today, I'm going to share with you this weaving method which will give you a rectilinear form. So uh, I'm going to use a recycled uh, cardboard for the weaving loom. So let me share with you how to make this weaving loom. In between these two lines, you're going to subdivide this space into uh, smaller grids. So for instance, every 2 cm, I'll make a marking. 
Don't worry about these markings on the on the cardboard because it is not part of the weaving the weaving object. So it is just a guide for you to do the weaving. And also, don't no need to worry about uh, how precise these lines or the dimensions of these measurements because weaving is a very organic uh, process. Okay, so I have divided in the weaving object the width into about six spaces. So what I'm going to do is to cut a slot on both sides. These slots are used for the yarn to weave over this weaving loom. So approximately you can uh, cut a slot about 1 cm or 1.5 cm. So now I'm going to um, create the structure of this uh, weaving object by using um, a jute yarn. So I'm going to slot in this jute yarn into the first slot. And because of the uh, rigidity of the cardboard and also the jute is quite uh, rigid, you can either use a masking tape to tape here or you can just simply tie a knot. Okay, so then you continue to the opposite side, slot it in, and then go to the back, go to the next one. And then you go over like this and come back to the front. The idea is to create a continuous loop. Okay, so you go to the opposite side, number two, slot it in. Every time you slot it in to the back, you will go to the next one from the back on the same side. So, to make it easier, I'm going to write the number on the board. Okay. So now, you can go and select uh, the type or colors of the yarns that you like, and then you start to do the weaving. When you go into this weaving loom, uh, we will go in this pattern, like up and down, up and down in the relationship of these yarns. So for instance, if the first one you go over yarn number one, then the next one you will go under yarn number two. So the next one you will go over yarn number three. And for yarn number four, you go under. Okay, so then for yarn number five, you go over it. Okay, so for yarn number six, you go under it. And then for last one, the yarn number seven, you go over it. So you can see that uh, there's an alternate pattern for this cloth to go over these vertical yarns. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you can pull these strips uh, towards the other end when Whereas for this end, the loose end, you can just wrap over this last yarn into the structure like this. Don't worry about uh, it being loose because when you weave over the whole thing, the, um, they will be squeezed together and uh, they won't come, really come out. Okay, so how do we end this or continue this? If you have a long enough strip, so you can go under the last uh, yarn so make sure you wrap the cloth over yarn number seven so that you can continue this weaving process. We call it the first row, we have just finished. Then we, go, we move on to the second row. The principle is the same, but now we have to compare for the second row and the first row. Just now, for yarn number six, it, is, it was under, so now we have to go over. With the same logic, we'll go under yarn number five, over yarn number four, under yarn number three, over num yarn number two, and under yarn number one. Okay, so we still have some more. So again, make sure that you wrap the cloth over the last yarn. On this side is yarn number one. Okay. 
for the weaving process, you don't really need to prepare very long uh, strips of cloth or yarn because it may get very clumsy. So usually, uh, a good length will, will go for about a few uh, rows. For this loose end, don't worry because when you squeeze the whole fabric together, the structure will hold them together. Mm -hmm. So you can just leave it inside like this. So now I'm going to uh, pick another color or pick another strip of yarn. And uh, so I think I can manage this, this length. Okay, so roughly it's about maybe about six to eight rows. Yeah. So just now I stopped the first yarn at about number four. So when you have a new yarn, you don't really need to uh, start from there again. You can always start from yarn number one. So I go into yarn number one. Self-care is really about doing something pleasurable. In this activity, you have the control to choose the color uh, or the type of yarn that you like. And uh, you can also get in touch with materials, the softness of the yarn. And um, this repetitive motion helps us to stay in the here and now. So I finished this uh, weaving. For today, I did a rather small and manageable size. And uh, now I'm going to share with you how you can detach this weaving object from the weaving loom. As you can remember from the beginning, we have the yellow uh, yarn, which acts as the structure for the weaving object. So now we are going to take this, uh, yeah, all the yellow yarn out of this uh, cardboard, the loom. Okay, so. You can uh, start from either end or yarn number one or yarn number seven. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. I will take it out from uh, the loose end from this side first. So because the advantage of this um, cardboard is that it is flexible, so it's quite easy that uh, you can just take it out like this. Okay, so you can bend your cardboard a little and then you can take, it, take this out from the slots. Okay, it will look like this. So since one side of it is already released, so the other side will be uh, easier to take it out. Okay, now this uh, weaving object is finished but there are some loose ends on both sides right um, there are many ways that you can uh, end these loose ends for instance you can tie them into small knots you can also uh, use some beads to put it in and then tie a ribbon so it really depends on your creativity and how you like it to end okay so I'm good for me I'm going to tie the knots and sh so that uh, the the object is tight, yes. so I'll just tie all these together. So I have finished this uh, weaving uh, activity for self-care and with this loom, I can continue to make more uh, weaving objects. And I hope you will enjoy this uh, weaving activity and uh, find it fun and pleasurable. We have come to the end of today's session. To summarize, we have learned about the concept and implications of self-care. We have also explored how art as therapy can be a tool for self-care. Finally, we tried weaving activities as self-care. I hope you enjoyed the session. Be kind to yourself and use art for self-care. See you next time. Mm -hmm.